When we're using positioning on an element, we have the top, bottom, left, and right properties, and we also have our width and our height. And while sometimes you know you might go, well, which one should I be using to pull off a certain thing? They actually work together sometimes in slightly unexpected ways where you're defining the top, bottom, left, and right, as well as a width and a height. So in this video, we're gonna be looking at the differences between them and how you can do some interesting things with them as well. Hello, my front end friends, and welcome back to the channel. I'm so happy that you're here. And if you are new here, my name is Kevin, and here at my channel, we learn about how to make the web and how to make it look good with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials that mostly focus on the wonderful world of CSS. And in this video, what we're going to be doing is looking at something that I actually looked at not too long ago as part of a really short tip. And I want to explore more about how it actually works and this relationship between the positioning properties that we have and width and height instead of just showing that something is possible to do because I think it's always good to understand things at a bit of a deeper level. And of course we can do it without too much time on it because this is a pretty short video. So I guess I should just stop rambling and we should get into the video itself. All right, so here we are in CodeBen. So the link to this is down below if you wanna play around with the code a little bit. And I don't have anything fancy set up. I just have a content class here that has a div class of example, just because we're looking at a nice simple thing. And you can see I've styled that up and I have some other content in here. And what I'm going to do is I want to look at positioning and this would work for fixed positioning as well as absolute. Uh, but the big difference there is fixed will always be to the viewport, but with absolute, we can change the containing block of it. So it just gives us a little bit more to play with. And I think it's a little bit easier to understand. So the first thing I'm going to do is a position of absolute on my example here, since that's mainly what we're working on. And sorry, I'm using my old, um, my old keyboard here because I have some issues with my newer ones. So hopefully they don't uh, hold out, but my type, I might make a lot of typos in this one. Um, and there you can see when I do my position of absolute, what happens is uh, it stays exactly where it was, but everything else ignores it. It's pulled out of the normal flow, but it doesn't move. It still lives exactly where it was. And now with that, I could do a few different things. So I could come on here and say a top zero. But when I do this, the top zero is for its containing block. And the containing block right now is the viewport. And that's often why we see things where we take the parent or uh, a grandparent content. Um, and we give that a position of relative because that's one way that we can create a new containing block. And now it's at top zero of the dot content right there. And the main point of this video though is to look at the idea of width, top, bottom, left, right, width, height, and all of those different things and how they're different from one another and how you can actually use them together to do certain things that are kind of interesting. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is actually delete my width. And I'm going to delete my aspect ratio because it's not doing anything right now. And when I have my position absolute, say I do top and then I can say a bottom of zero and then we could do a left of zero and then a right of zero. And it's going to take up the entire space that's available for it. Uh, because again, it's looking at the containing block and it's going zero offset on all those sides. Now I could do the exact same thing if I take that off and I say I have a width of 100% and it's not exactly exactly the same, but uh, and then a height of 100%. And it's almost exactly the same, but you can see it's offset a little bit. Because remember, when we first did this, we saw that it stayed in its sort of natural resting state. It was just pulled out of the flow. So it's getting a width of 100% of this. It's getting a height of 100% of this here. But that is being offset a little bit because it's starting where it was originally going to start. So a lot of the time with that, you end up putting a top of zero and a left of a zero. And of course I'm doing zeros, you know, it depends on your design and all the different things you're doing, but, but we're just trying to keep it simple right now. So uh, we can see that it's now has the exact same result as if we did this, but we can do things that are a little bit different combining these properties with these two properties right here. And that's where things can get a little bit interesting. So for example, what we can do is we can actually turn off, uh, let's turn all these back on. We're just gonna put all of them there. But I'm gonna say that my width is 50%. My height is 50%. And you might go, well, Kevin, why is that interesting? That's sort of, you know, why do you even need then the bottom and the right property? The bottom and the right property, let's keep those together. You might say that the bottom and the right property there aren't actually doing anything, that they're, you know, they don't serve a function. It looks like that. It looks like we're setting all of these here and then we set these other two, but then because there's a width and a height, this is overwriting that. But that's not exactly true. This is the space that the example, my div here, has to live in. We can use things like margins to move it around. We can do other things uh, to move it around within that space. So for example, I could come in here and I could say margin of auto, and it's actually going to center right in the middle. 
because it has that entire space of the top left right zero all of those are zeros that's the offset for it so just for example if i took these off it's not going to be the same you can see when i do that it's going back to its top left and that's it because it's living within that space. So if ever you're doing this centering trick, you do actually need to declare all of those, and then you also need to declare the width and the height that you wanna use along with that. So again, this becomes the, the space that's available to it, and then the width and the height is where are we using in that, and that also opens up the doors for auto margins and other things like that. So yeah, a nice look at the differences between them and some interesting things. You could do this with a position fixed element that you need to take up, you know, you want it to always be centered on the screen. It's a modal that's popping up and you want to make sure it's always in the right spot. This is a fantastic way to do it. And actually that's how I found out about this. It's part of the defaults of the new dialog element that is pretty much on the way here. I think Firefox is the only one we're really waiting for uh, support on there. So that's how I found out about it. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you like this idea of quick, shorter tips and tricks and all of that, I've put a custom playlist for you right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, a really big thank you to my supporters of awesome, Zach and Randy, as well as all of my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.